Hello, Nancy. How are you today? I'm fine, and you? I'm doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, Mary's not going to be with us today. She has a, another engagement. So um, I haven't heard of anyone else. So it sounds like it's just you and me. So okay. we'll make it, won't we? Okay. How's your family? Um, my old song in the week in the weekend was sick. Oh, have a fa favor and pain to head and body, but today is it better? Today is better. He going okay. to the school today. Going going to the school. A little song, too much homework every day. <laughs> All time the math and English, uh, all a lot homework. My husband continue continue work in other country. Tomorrow oh. he come back, and I work virtual therapy. It's good. It's great. Well, now will you let your oldest son? Will the school let your oldest son um, there because of his fever? Only one day, only one day. Okay. Okay. So they uh, don't know go to the school. Okay. Because that's one of the things they check mm -hmm. very regularly um, because it can be a sign of this COVID um, problem. So um, I found something that might be a help to us. Let's look at it and see if it's helpful or not. The thing of it is, if it's helpful, good. If it's not, forget it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, our verse today says, if we confess our sins to God, he will forgive us our sins, 1 John 1, 9. And confess means, hey God, I did it. Um, I've been working as a census enumerator, so I go to these different houses of people who didn't fill out the census and um, talk with them about it. And I was getting pretty proud because I was seeing people or neighbors, somebody to help me to eliminate that um, particular house as um, on the list. And all of a sudden I realized pride is not from God. So I had to talk with God and say, wait a minute here, pride, I, I'm, I'm getting very proudful. Um, I'm doing a good job, but that's nothing to get proud of. What I need to get proud of is how God is helping me to do a good job. And so he can forgive me for being proud, but he can also continue to help me because I realize what I did wrong. And then our vowels. So what is this one? A. Okay. And this one? E. And this one? I. And this one. O. And this one. U. Very good. <laughs> I can always tell you're practicing because the next time you do better. <laughs> and it's hard because it's the same letter, but in Spanish you say it differently than in English. And so it mm -hmm. takes practice. That's why it's so hard to learn English. Then this is the thing that I uh, found I don't know if it'll help or not, but if it does, I'm glad. The word T-O, pronounced two, it indicates motion. So like your boys are going to school. Your husband is going to work. So it's, it's motion, it's, it's getting from one place to another. Okay. Then, if you put, you want to write it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll wait. Because this is for you. 
Okay, ready. All right, this one, it's T O O, mm -hmm. and it's said exactly the same way two, two. But this one means in addition to, also exclusively, uh, mm -hmm. like too much. I had too much to eat last night and my stomach hurts. Or um, your son has too much homework. Mm -hmm. That's what this too means. Okay. And it's spelled differently, but it's pronounced the same. Mm -hmm. But then this one is spelled differently, but it's also two. It's pronounced the same. Uh -huh. So this is the number two. Okay. Dos. Uno, dos, dos. one, uh -huh. two. Excuse me, just a minute. <coughs> Sorry. So um, those are three words that sound alike, but are written differently, but they mean completely different. Um, if you use this one to mean uh, motion, it's going to confuse people. Even though you're saying it, um, what you're saying must fit together. All right, and then we have <clears throat> then and then. And the difference between then and then is just the vowel. But you do pronounce it differently. So then is a point in time. Then you moved from Puerto Rico to the United States. Okay. <clears throat> that was at a specific time. So then is a point in time. Okay. And then then is a comparison. Um, my hair is much whiter than your hair. So I'm comparing the color of hair. So that's a comparison. Um, this house is bigger than that house. Or this apartment is smaller than that apartment. So it's comparing two things. And it has to be comparing things that are similar. So in other words, you wouldn't compare eyes and hair. You, you would compare just hair or just eyes. So it has to be the same thing, like house or house. It would be house and apartment. That's not comparing the same thing. All right, then these three are all pronounced the same but they mean something completely different. There, spelled T-H-E-R-E, -E, is a place like Gallatin or Springfield. Mm -hmm. So I am going there to work. I am going there to school. It's a place. Now, this is pronounced exactly the same but is a contraction for they are. Mm -hmm. So this is there and meaning they are. Mm -hmm. So this there you would use having to do with the place and this there meaning they are. Um, you're um, we're talking about your sons, they're at school, mm -hmm. they are. Okay, and mm -hmm. then this there is a possessive, meaning it belongs to them. This is their book. This is their apartment. Okay. This is their school. So these are three more words that sound alike, but mean completely different. Okay. Now, <clears throat> here are two more that sound alike, <laughs> but are completely different. This, if you just have Y-O-U, we're saying you. So Nancy is you. But 
if we're talking about your boys, that means the boys belong to you. It's possessive. Okay. So um, it could be one thing like an it, or it could be several like the boys. That would be a plural. So it's not singular or plural, it's just possessive. Something belongs to you. That is your pen, that is your book. Okay. Now, no, if I go too fast, tell me to slow down. Use uh, your use singular and plural. This one, yes. Okay. It's both for singular and plural. So you could say like they they belong to you. Your boys, they. So it's both singular and plural. Okay. All right, and then this your is a contraction of you are. You are studying English. You're studying English. Again, they're pronounced the same, but they mean different. And then we're going to were and we are. These are spelled the same, but this one has this little apostrophe in it. So this is were, past tense of are. Mm -hmm. You were living in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. You were studying English last week. The boys were going to school yesterday. So it's, it's just the past tense of are. Mm -hmm. And it has to do with doing, something that you're doing. But this one, you put that, you see it's W-E-R-E, -E, you put that apostrophe in there, and then it's we mm -hmm. are. It's mm -hmm. a contraction for we are. So we're going to school, we were going to school yesterday, we're going to school today. So um, it's, it's another point of confusion, but I found this um, thing that uh, showed it to me. And I said, oh, this is so helpful, I think. So, and then where? So here you have W-E-R-E, -E, you put that H in there, this is were, and this is where. 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 And this is again talking about a place like Gallatin. And then this was a bit of a problem the other day. This mm -hmm. is where. 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 I have clothes on. Where. It's not were. It's not where, but it's where, and it sounds very, very similar. Mm -hmm. Where and where, the only difference is this H, and you kind of blow this first beginning of this word, where. Mm -hmm. But where, where, you don't. It's just oh, where. Where. Okay, and that's to have clothes on. Um, wearing, it looks like we are both wearing t-shirts. Mm -hmm. And that's just adding the ing into the wear. And this is a verb, meaning to have clothes on. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. now any question about any of these? I need to learn this and practice. <laughs> so now, do you have it all written down? I noticed that you were writing, but did I go too fast or anything? No. no. Okay, right. you have it? Okay. All right. And then one of the things that seems to be a problem for many people is 
man and woman are singular. The difference is this A right mm -hmm. here. And man is a part of woman. And man and woman, it's not pronounced the same. Woman. This is woman and this is man. So the M-A-N part is not pronounced the same, but this is the singular. This is talking about one man, one woman, um, Nancy and her husband, that sort of thing. But then plural, you change only the vowel. Mm -hmm. Now, most words, when they're plural, you add an S. Shoe, shoes. Mm -hmm. Dress, well, that doesn't work. Um, shirt, shirts. So you just add an S when it's plural. But for man, it's men, and it has this E in there. And for women, this is woman, and this is women. So you pronounce both of the vowels completely different. Mm -hmm. In fact, women and men sound more alike on this M-E-N part. Women, men, they sound more alike. It's this beginning part that's different. This is woe, man, woman. This is we, yeah. women. <laughs> So they sound different, they're based on the same thing, but it's really a point of confusion. So that's something that um, we might have to just keep working on, just like you've worked on the vowels, you've worked on some of these other words, you'll get it, it just takes time. And one of the things when you were saying that your younger son has problems with all this homework and it's math, and don't you teach math? I like the math. <laughs> so that's a blessing right there. So you know and understand math and math is the same in English or Spanish. It's the words that are different but the numbers are the same and the operations are the same. Mm -hmm. So that's a blessing that you know and understand math. Okay, any question about any of this? I need to practice. <laughs> well, I'll keep it on here and, and when you think you understand it, well then we can go on. I don't want to make it dull and boring, but at the same time, these are things that are problems. And it's not just problems for you either. <laughs> okay, so we were, uh, we stopped on page 148. We were started on page 149 when I realized we went out of our, out of time last week. This is in the textbook page 148 and there at the top is the conversation between Sarah and Bill and Bill is calling and wanting to talk with Sarah and says I'm Sarah says I'm busy and then comes the story um, and so well let's let's go back and we'll just go through the conversation once. Do you want to be A or do you want me to be A? I am A. Okay. Hello. Hi, Sarah. It's Bill. Are you busy? I'm watching a movies. Can I call you later? No problem. Bye. Goodbye. Okay. Any question on any of that? No. All right, and then on B, uh, read the sentences and the answer. Okay. 
Is Sarah and Bill are on the phone? Okay. Sarah and Bill are on the phone. Yes. Okay. Sarah is busy now. Yes. Sarah is reading the new paper now. No. Bill is busy now. No. Okay. Any question on any of those? No. All right. And then D is a story. And we were talking about that apostrophe S. So, um, it is, you put the contraction to mm -hmm. its. It is, is the contraction its. But when you're talking about a person or an animal or even a thing, like you can talk about the table's leg, this apostrophe S indicates possessive. Mm -hmm. Like Bill's telephone. It's the mm -hmm. telephone that belongs to Bill. Mm -hmm. Or dog's bark, the bark that belongs to the dog. Or table's leg, the leg that belongs to the table. Mm -hmm. The table's leg is loose, so it makes the table uh, jiggly. So this, when mo when you add the apostrophe S on most things, it's indicating possessive. But when you add it to it, it's meaning it is. And actually the possessive of it is it is, oh, well, I can do it better than I can say it. So this is the possessive of it. So the apostrophe S means the contraction it is and ITS means possessive. Okay. So another confusion. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so anytime we come across something that I think might be a confusion, I'll try to do something like this to help it to not be uh, as confusing. All right, and then um, the next part, E, is a story. Would you read the story, please? Yes. It's Wednesday, Evelyn, Evelyn. Sarah is home. She has free time now. She wants to talk to Bill. She calls his cell phone. Bill's cell phone is off. He is in English class. Sarah needs to call him later. Okay. Now, in that first sentence, it's Wednesday evening. Um, Evening. 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 Yes, evening. Evening. You don't really say that second E. Just evening. Evening. Right. Evening. And I think that's like tarde or something evening. like that in Spanish. Evening. So it's just evening. Evening in Spanish. Este. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yes. So, um, but everything else sounds good. All right. And then part E, um, if it's in the story, it's a yes. If it's not in the story, it's a no. So read those sentences. Sarah is, is at work. No. In ho she is in home. Sarah is busy. No. She has free time. Bill is called Sarah. No. Sarah called Bill. 
Bill is in English class. Yes. Sara need to call Bill later. Yes. Asking any questions? No. All right. Now, what we started talking about last time is the present continuous. And one part of it is this ing on the end of a verb. So let's see, watching a movie in that first um, um, conversation. Oh, oh, down in uh, number three on uh, B number three, Sarah is reading the newspaper. Well, that's another um, present continuous. That's that ing making read uh, something that's over time. It's not right. just one happening. It's over time. It takes time to read the newspaper. It takes time to watch a movie. So it's watching, reading. Um, and then number three in E is calling. Bill is calling Sarah. Okay. So it's, he doesn't just call like outside, you might say, hey, or hi, or something like that, and you just call once. But it's going to take time for him to get hold of Sarah and them to talk. So calling. So that's the meaning of this present continuous. And it adds an ing onto the verb. Then, this verb, I am, you are. Don't ask me. <laughs> I just have to know it. Okay. So when I talk about I, you say I am. I am, I am um. doing something. And um, that contraction would be I'm. So I'm. I am watching. But when it comes to you, it, you is very indefinite. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, there could be one you, like right now. I have one student, so that's one you. But I could have five students, and that would be five you's. So you is very indefinite. So you always use the plural for you. So you are watching, you are watching. But then <clears throat> when you give a name or a pronoun, he is watching, she is watching, it is watching, Bill is watching, Sarah is watching, um, the dog is watched. <laughs> um, so is, is what you use for one other person or, or place. Um, mm -hmm. Gallatin is a city. Mm -hmm. So you use is in those cases. Then the plurals are we you and they, and they're all are. I guess I should put here. Make that a little more clear. Okay, then in the book on page 149, there at the top, it has the um, pronouns listed and the verbs that go with them. And it uses this whole set of pronouns. I, you, he, she, we, they. But then it gives the contraction. So I am watching a movie becomes I'm. I'm. 
I'm watching a movie. You are becomes your. Your. You're watching a movie. He is becomes he's, he's watching a movie. She is becomes she's watching a movie. We are becomes we're watching a movie. And they are becomes they're watching a movie. Yeah. 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 I'm reading. <laughs> right. I am, you are, he is, she is, we are, they are. I'm, no, I'm. I'm, is right. I'm. I'm. Your, his, she's, where, there. Good. There. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. And see, the problem you had there with I'm, I'm, that has to do with how you pronounce the I in Spanish and English. <laughs> it's, it's one of those issues. In this, so, in this, in this, uh, the song is the same, the, the, the vowel, I. I'm. When you're talking about self, it's I. I. Just the same vowel, the name of the vowel. Okay. So it's I'm. I. I'm studying English. Okay. I'm studying. Okay. All right. Yes. So you think you have that part? You have ready. to. No, I'm ready. Okay. All right, and then on um, G, it says, write the answers, use contractions. And so it has the full question, what are you doing? And then it just has the subject, I, and then that slash, and then listen to music. So the I, you put the apostrophe M with it, for I'm listening to music. Mm -hmm. Now let's go through and work through each one of these and then we'll do them as um, little conversations. They are very, very short conversations but they're little conversations. So number two, what is Mrs. White doing? She's going to the library, library, library. You started right. Uh, and see, that's going back to the sound of the vowel. Okay. Library, library. Yeah. So you did the she's and going fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then number three, what are you doing? We're visiting, visiting my sister. Good. And number four, what's Rob doing? He's watching a movie on TV. Okay. And see there, the what's, that's what is. Okay. All right. And number five, what are Sheena and David doing? They're reading the new paper, the newspaper. Okay. Any question on any of those? No. All right. So um, let's go through them again as little conversations. So do you want to be A or do you want me to be A? Uh, letter G. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I am letter B. Okay. What are you doing? I'm, I'm listening to music. And see, listen would be listen. just the, I listen to music. But when you say I'm listening 
Listen. You have to add an extra syllable there to get that ing sound in. Okay. I'm listening to music, okay? I'm listening to music. What is Mrs. White doing? She's going to the library. library. Good, good. <laughs> You're getting there. And what are you doing? We're visiting my sister. See there that you is plural. And it's, it's not clear that it's plural, but what are you doing? It could be one person or it could be more than one. Well, it's more than one because the answer is we. Mm -hmm. We're. 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 So um, the you is confusing that way. You, it's not clear whether it's singular or plural. So you kind of treat it as though it's plural. All right, and then number four, What's Rob doing? He, he's watching a movie on TV. Good. And what are Sheena and David doing? They're reading the newspaper. Okay. And so now you're A. Okay. What's, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm listening to music. What is, is Mrs. Y doing? She's going to the library. What, what are you doing? We're visiting my sister. What Robert doing? He's watching a movie on TV. In this, in this if number four, what is, what is Robert doing? That's right. Okay. That's what is, and um, it's a contraction for what is, so it's what's. Okay. Number five, what are Sheena and David doing? They're reading the newspaper. Okay. What are you doing? I'm listen, listening to music. What is Mrs. White doing? She's going to the library. What are you doing? We're visiting my sister. What's Rob doing? He's watching a movie on TV. What are Sheena and David doing? They are there reading the newspaper. I'm confused. <laughs> Number okay. three, you just play. Um, you tell me you in the question, but in the answer you said we. Right, and that's what I was saying. You is very confusing because it's not specifically singular or plural. It can be either. It can be both. It can be singular this time and plural next time. So that's why you is using, see up here, you are watching, you are watching, because it's not clear if it's singular or plural. Okay. It's another part of this confusing <laughs> English. <laughs> Are we again? Yes. Okay. I am letter A. Okay. What are you doing? I'm listening to music. What is Mrs. White doing? She's going to the library. What are you doing? We're visiting my sister. What's Robert doing? He's watching a movie on TV. What are Sheena and David doing? They're reading the newspaper. What are you doing? I am, I am listening to music. What is Mrs. White doing? 
She's going to the library. What are you doing? We are visiting my sister. What's Rob doing? He's watching a movie on TV. What are Sheena and David doing? They're reading the newspaper. Again or no? No, it was okay. <laughs> All right. And you had several questions, so I think it was very helpful to go through it several times because some of the questions you didn't bring up at the beginning. So um, I think it was very helpful to go through it several times because it helped you to think about what's being said. And English is confusing. <laughs> It's hard. All right. And then uh, H says, listen and check your answers. Well, we did that verbally, so we don't need to listen to it. And then at the bottom, it says, take turns. And the students actually do an action and um, the rest guess it. Well, we only have two of us. So we'll just kind of skip that. That's one of the hard parts of just having one student. Uh, it's, it's not bad, but it limits some things. Um, I've noticed that going through the book with just one student is much, much faster. So if you think we're going too fast or you need to go over something again, just say so. Um, I know this one night, Bianca was the only one, uh, the only student, and I think she got overwhelmed. It, it just went too fast for her. But she didn't say anything until the end. Mm -hmm. So do say something because I can't read minds. I failed that. <laughs> okay, now let's go to the workbook. Okay. Page 100. So again, it's talking about present continuous and how you change the verb and you change the um, uh, subject of the now of the of the sentence as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the subject isn't just I, but it's I am or I'm. So um, it's necessary to really practice on some of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, then um, these again are little conversations. It's basically the same, well, it's that telephone call conversation. And, um, but there's part of it that we uh, work on. Like on number one, the second A says, I'm, and then it has in parentheses, play slash the guitar, close um, parentheses, and playing the guitar. So it's going to do the contraction or this first, you know, this first uh, part of the sentence. It's just the part of the sentence that's making the verb into a uh, present continuous verb. It's adding that ing onto the word. So number one, um, I'm playing the guitar. So when you read it um, and we're doing the uh, conversation, you don't say that part in the parentheses. So it's just, I'm playing the guitar. Okay, now what do you think number two is? Okay, number two is, I'm going to the library. Very good, all right. And then number three? Number three, I'm Reading the newspaper. Good. And number four. Number four. I'm 
going to the do the movies. Okay. Any question on that part of it? Mm -hmm. All right, then okay. it's conversations. So do you want me to be A or do you want to be A? Um, uh, A. Okay. Hello. Hi, Joe. Are you busy? I am. I'm playing the guitar. Oh, I, um, can I call you later? No problem. Bye. Goodbye. Hello. Hi, Maria. Are you busy? I'm going to the library. Can I call you later? No problem. Bye. Goodbye. Hello. Hi, Susan. Are you busy? I'm reading the newspaper. Can I call you but can I call you later? No problem. Bye. Goodbye. Hello. Hi Mark, are you busy? I'm going to the movies. Can I can I call you later? No problem. Bye. Goodbye. Can I call you later? Can I call you later? Can I call you later? Let us see. Can I call you later? Okay. Begin to word begin. C A. The pronunciation is different. Yes. In Spanish is ca. In Spanish, all word is ca. Casa, Carmen. Este, carne is the same. C A is the same. Ca. <laughs> and this is part of what makes English so hard because there are at least six or more different pronunciations just for the letter A. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't all make sense. Sorry, but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So you would think C A, why would the A before the N be a different sound than the A before the L? Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> That's where all the practice is necessary. Mm -hmm. Okay. So am I A? Okay. Hello. Hi, Joe. Are you busy? I'm playing the guitar. Can I call you later? No problem. Bye. Goodbye. Hello. Hi, Maria. Are you busy? I'm going to the library. Can I call you later? No problem. Bye. Goodbye. Hello. Hi, Susan. Are you busy? I'm reading the newspaper. Can I call you later? No problem. Bye. Goodbye. Hello. Hi, Mark. Are you busy? I'm going to the movies. Can I call you later? No problem. Bye. Goodbye. I'm, I'm, I'm. <laughs> Yesterday, Diego uh, learned me, uh, touch, uh, talk with me. I'm on. <laughs> yeah, no, no, remember. He, he say he told me, I'm, M, letter M, you need to sound M. <laughs> I think he's going to try to make you an English student very quickly. Just don't let him be too bossy. He's your son, not your My son is very strong something. with me. He's strong with me. <laughs> I tell, tell, him, tell him, I talk with Miss Wanda to you um, help, okay. I tell him that I told you 
for you learn other students. He is very teacher. He is good teacher. Do you, have, do you have other teacher? Diego is the better. <laughs> He's strong. He's the student. He's very strong. He's strong. Um, maybe one day he will be a teacher. Yeah. If, if that's his desire. And one of the things that I have noticed is there is a need for translators. So if he knows how to read Spanish and he can translate English, Spanish, Spanish, English, he can work as a translator to put himself through college to become whatever he wants to be. If he wants to be a teacher, or if he wants to be a doctor, or he wants to be an architect, whatever he wants to mm -hmm. be. Um, it's one of the, I think, less known activities that um, these second generation um, young people have because it's open to all of them. Those that have learned how to read Spanish, it's open to all of them. And they can then go, you know, t uh, train themselves because they're learning how to be an interpreter. There are some families that it's only the child who translates for the family. Mm -hmm. But um, that child as an interpreter, can become whatever they want to be because they have this skill. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. <laughs> and really, probably you wouldn't be able to do it, but Diego would just simply because he's done it. It's something that he's done. Mm -hmm. So he's, he knows how to do it just by practice. That is good. Mm -hmm. That is very good. Okay, do we want to do these conversations again or no? Uh, one more time. Okay. I am letter A. All right. Okay, hello. Hi, Joe, are you busy? I'm, I'm playing the guitar, playing the guitar. Can I call you later? No problem. Bye. Goodbye. Hello. Hi, Maria. Are you busy? I'm going to the library. Can I call you later? No problem. Bye. Goodbye. Hello. Hi, Susan. Are you busy? I'm reading the newspaper. Can I call you later? No problem. Bye. Goodbye. Hello. Hi, Mark. Are you busy? I'm going to the movies. Can I call you later? No problem. Bye. Goodbye. Okay. Okay. So you think you've worked out some of your questions. Now that's not going to be all the questions, but the more you work on the questions and, and these problem areas, the better you'll be. Excuse me just a minute. <clears throat> Right now, <clears throat> my allergies are really giving me a bad time. Mm -hmm. um, there are some things that bloom here that um, they just bloom in the fall. And when they start blooming, I start having a bad time. <laughs> they're pretty, they're yellow. Um, in fact, they came from another country because they were pretty. And the people that were coming to the United States from this other country said, oh, I like these. So they brought them. The only thing is my body doesn't like them. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to use contractions. Mm -hmm. So like on number one, it says she is using email. Okay. So... 
it's used <clears throat> it, excuse me <coughs> so it makes a contraction of she is to she's using an email mm -hmm. so i've got it broken down here okay. here's the singular list mm -hmm. so i am becomes i'm you are becomes your he is becomes he's she is becomes she's it is becomes it's and then on the plural side we are become we're you are becomes your and they are becomes their yeah. see again the you are is on both sides, both mm -hmm. singular and plural. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So number one, she is using email. She's using email. Mm -hmm. so all I'm going to put is this contraction. I'm not going to, I didn't write the whole sentence because the rest of the sentence is right there. Okay. okay. So what would number two be? Number two, your, your are reading the newspaper. Number three, there are watching TV. Number four, we're listen, listening to music. Number five, he's going to the movies. Number six, I'm playing soccer. Number seven, she's she's exercise exercising. No, you're saying it's right. It, you're you're saying it correctly. Exercise, <clears throat> exercise. Okay. Number A, a George visiting visiting friends, and number nine, I'm playing the guitar. The guitar. Okay. Now you kept saying exercising right, and you were saying all the pieces right. Um, it's just that you weren't sure that it was right, but it is. You were right. Okay. okay any question on any of the others? No. And I noticed at the first you said. You are, uh, no, you said you're are reading the newspaper. Well, you don't have the R twice. It's okay. just you're reading the your, newspaper. Your but uh, by about number four, you weren't doing that anymore. So I think you got that straightened out in your own mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. And then in C, it's kind of like um, they have on page 100 and like they had in the textbook, it's giving you the pieces of the sentence and you're making the whole sentence. So like number one, it just gives he play soccer and then the answer is he's playing. Now, the soccer is the same. So I'm just going to put he's playing because those are the two words that we need to work on so what do you think number two would be number two we are going to the movies right number three i'm reading the newspaper newspaper good number four he's as a sign as a sign <laughs> difficult for me. It's the way that last S, it's Same. pronounced like a Z, exercising. Exercising. So it's exercise and exercising. So it's like this S is a Z. It has that. Sing, Z, the, the that music, sing the music. 
Well, it's it's not the sing so much as zing. Zing, zing. Exercise, exercising. Exercising. It, it, it makes more of a, a Z sound, and I don't know if that'll help or not, but you're getting it. I think you're just not quite sure that you have it. Okay. You do. In this, the letter E change. Yes. I N G. Yes. And so basically, when a word ends in an E, you change the E to I and add NG. So, Wait a minute, this isn't the right word. So a word ending in E, you change the E to I and mm -hmm. add in G. Mm -hmm. Now that is a rule. And I remember having to learn that rule. Some of these, I'm not sure I ever heard a rule. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then again, it may be that my brain just didn't accept it. <laughs> that happened too. But that's good that you saw that. Exercising. Exercising. Okay. Number five. They're using email. Yes. Number T, you're watching TV. Yes. Number seven, she's playing the guitar. Yes. Number A, I'm visit, visiting friends. And number nine, she's listening to music. Okay. Visiting. She's playing the guitar. You're watching. TV. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? No. That are E shanes, E A N G, B C D. Just find me. Okay. No. No question. Okay. okay. So go back to the textbook, page 150. Page one. Okay. All right, now then, um, this is, it was talking about free time activities at first. But now it's talking about household chores. And these are things that we all have to do around the house. And if we don't, they don't get done. And then like if it's the laundry, the laundry piles <laughs> up, or the dishes, the dishes pile up. Um, most of us will manage somehow to come up with something to eat. But um, what do you think the activity is in number one. She is uh, walking. Walk the dog. Okay. Have you ever had a dog? Uh, in this time, no. In Puerto Rico, yeah. Yes. So you didn't just leave that dog in the house. No. You had to take him out so he could do his business. 
If you didn't, you had a mess and a puppy is big mess. <laughs> okay, and number two? Number two, he make dinner. Okay, and number three? He to do the laundry. Okay, and number four? She is play bill. Okay, to me, the way she's holding her head, <laughs> it's like, oh, oh no. That's what I think of when it's I love it. It's it's a lot. <laughs> All right, and number five? She is clean the house. And number six? He is talk on the phone. And number seven? He do homework. He's Diego, <laughs> do homework. Okay, all right. <laughs> and number eight? They are take out the garbage. garbage. Okay, now here's another letter that's a problem. The G at the beginning is hard, g, gar, 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 but that G at the end is soft, g, garbage, 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 you know, garbage. It, it's not hard, <laughs> so what makes it um, one and not the other, I don't know that one answer, <laughs> okay, and then number nine, uh, he's washed the car. I was out the other day and I met this lady washing the car and they said it was going to rain. Now, I didn't bring up about the rain. I just said something about you have to keep washing the car, don't you, or it gets a mess. She says, well, it's going to rain and it was going to turn to mud if I didn't wash the car. <laughs> so um, it's, it's interesting how people react to the rain and the washing the car. Okay. So then, uh, list, uh, A, listen and point to the household chores. <clears throat> I'm sorry. So number six, talking on the phone, that can be a chore in that, you know, I have to call um, uh, the doctor or I have to call the bank or something like that. But I think it's more a pleasure most of the time you know, I'm calling a friend. I'm not um, having a good time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm having a good time. I'm not doing a chore, <clears throat> especially with a smile on my face, unless the bank <laughs> has some good thing, something good to say. Uh. Okay, so now listen and point to the household chores, listen and repeat, and then part B, listen and read, Listen and repeat. 15. Exercise A. <coughs> Listen and point. 1. Walk the dog. 2. Make dinner. Make dinner. 3. Do the laundry. Do the laundry. 4. Pay bills. Five, clean the house. Clean the house. Six, talk on the phone. Talk on the phone. Seven, do homework. Homework. Eight, take out the garbage. Take out the car. Nine, wash the car. Listen and repeat. One, walk the dog. Walk the dog. Two, make dinner. Make dinner. Three, do the laundry. Do the laundry. Four, pay bills. Pay bills. Five, clean the house. Clean the house. Six, talk on the phone. Talk on the phone. Seven, 
do homework. Do homework. Eight. Take out the garbage. Take out the garbage. Nine. Wash the car. Wash the car. Page 150. Exercise B. Listen and read. One. Walk the dog. Walk the dog. Two. Walk. Make dinner. Make dinner. Three. Do the laundry. Do the laundry. Four. Pay bills. Pay bills. Five. Clean the house. Clean the house. Six. Talk on the phone. Talk on the phone. Seven. Do homework. Do homework. Eight. Take out the garbage. Take out the garbage. Nine. Wash the car. Wash the car. Listen and repeat. One. Walk the dog. Walk the dog. Two. Make dinner. Make dinner. Three. Do the laundry. Do the laundry. Four. Pay bills. Pay bills. Five. Clean the house. Clean the house. Six. Talk on the phone. Talk on the phone. Seven. Do homework. Do homework. Eight. Take out the garbage. Take out the garbage. Nine. Wash the car. Wash the car. Okay, any question? Mm -mm. All right, in part C, it says look at the words in exercise B. What do you do at home? Okay. I make dinner, do the laundry, pay bills, clean the house, talk on the phone, take out the garbage. I don't work the dog. I don't, well, do homework with Diego. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't wash the car. My husband washes the car. Okay. Any questions? No. All right. Then on part E, look at the picture over here at the side and what do you think is happening? Okay, the woman's, the woman, the woman talk we on the phone and the men go to the laundry and other woman on the phone okay so let's find out what the conversation is really about when I ask you to tell what's going on in the picture, it's giving you a chance to think about your English, to use your English. And that's how you learn. It's using it. It's not just reading it or writing it. Okay, so let's listen, listen and repeat. Mm -hmm. Page 151, Exercise E. Listen. Hello? Hi, Mom. Are the kids helping you? Well. Is Alex doing the laundry? Yes, he is. Is Tina washing the car? No, she isn't. She's talking on the phone. <laughs> 
listen and repeat. Hello. Hello. Hi, Mom. Are Hi, the Mom. kids helping you? Are the kids helping you? Hmm. Well. Well. Is Alex doing the laundry? Is Alex doing the laundry? The laundry? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Is Tina washing the car? Is Tina washing the car? No, she isn't. She's talking on the phone. No, she isn't. She's talking on the phone. <laughs> okay, any questions? No. <laughs> there, you have A says hello, and then the next time A speaks, it's that well. Well. The, the grandmother is trying to not talk about Tina, but how do I answer my daughter? Um, it's one of those, it, it doesn't really mean a whole lot as far as the meaning of the word, but it conveys the idea of, hmm, I'm not sure I want to tell you what's going on. And, of course, when mom, um, the uh, daughter, finds out that her daughter isn't doing what she's doing, she's not pleased. So it's one of those words that it's not according to what it actually means. It's more according to just conveying a feeling, a thought. In Spanish, it's bueno. <laughs> so see it's in english and spanish the word itself is different but the thought is there the the concept is there <laughs> okay so do you want to be a or b uh, for a <laughs> okay okay hello hi mom are the kids helping you well, is Alex doing the laundry? Just he's. Is Tina washing the car? No, she isn't. She's talking on the phone. Hello. Hi, Mom. Are the kids helping you? Well, is Alex doing, doing the laundry? Yes, he is. Is Tina washing the car? No, she isn't. She's talking on the phone. Hello. Hi, Mom. Are the kids helping you? Well. Is Alex doing the laundry? Yes, he's. Is Tina washing the car? No, she isn't. She's talking on the phone. Hello. Hi, Mom. Are the kids helping you? Helping you? Well. Is, Al is, is Alex doing the laundry? Yes, he is. Is Tina washing the car? No, she isn't. She's talking on the phone. Hello. Hi, Mom. Are the kids helping you? Well. Is Alex doing the laundry? Yes, he is. Is Tina washing the car? No, she isn't. She talked on the phone. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Mom. Are the kids helping you? Well. Uh, is Alex doing the laundry? Yes, he is. Is Tina washing the car? No, she isn't. She's talking on the phone. Hello. Hi, Mom. Are the kids helping you? Well. Is Alex doing the laundry? Yes, he is. Is Tina washing the car? No, she isn't. She talk on the phone. Hello. Hi, Mom. Are the kids Helping you? Well. If, uh, is 
Alex doing the laundry? Yes, he is. Is Tina washing the car? No, she isn't. She's talking on the phone. Hello. Hi, Mom. Are the kids helping you? Well. Is Alex doing the laundry? He, yes, he is. Is Tina washing the car? No, she isn't. She's talking on the phone. Hello. Hi, Mom. Are the kids helping you? Well. Is Alex doing the laundry? Yes, he is. Is Tina washing the car? No, she isn't. She's talking on the phone. <laughs> hey, hello. Hi, Mom. Are the kids helping you? Well. Is Alex doing the laundry? Yes, he is. Is Tina washing the car? No, she isn't. She talk, she's talking on the phone. Okay, any questions? No. All right then. Um, in the previous, when it talked about previous, can't talk, present continuous, it talked about how to make a verb so it was uh, lasting over time, mm -hmm. like walking, talking, studying. So you add that ing and it makes it um, useful over time, not just one happening, but it happens over time. Well, on this one, it's giving you how to answer how to ask a question in the present continuous and how to answer. So the question, are you, for a question you put the verb first, are mm -hmm. you doing the laundry? The, the sentence, um, the declarative sentence is you are doing the laundry. The question is, are you with the verb first? Are you oh. doing the laundry? Always in the question, the verse is first? Okay. Yes. Always. But, but notice it's not all of the verb. It's not that um, word that you use the ing on. It's just part of the verb. Okay. So it's are you doing, not are doing you. Okay. So it's just that part are is um m it's just that part are you and then doing the laundry and then the answer is yes i am or no i'm not and you look at these answers you don't put on the yes you don't make contractions of any of those mm -hmm. But on the no, you make a contraction. No, I'm not. No, he isn't. Now on the I, you put the contraction with the verb. I am, I'm not. On the he, you put the contraction with the verb and not. So no, he isn't. No, she isn't. And then, no, they aren't. So with the I, you put the contraction with the I in the verb. With the rest of them, the contraction is the verb and not. Mm -hmm. So isn't, is, is, isn't, and are is aren't. Now it's the same with um, are and aren't. It's the same words. It's the same letters, but you pronounce it a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. So yes, they are and no, they, and you don't say aren't. You kind of mash it together and come out with aren't. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, oh. Art. So it comes out a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And on that last question, are the kids, so the article is there with kids, are the kids doing the laundry? With the others, it's just the verb, the noun or uh, pronoun, and then the um, present continuous verb. So, um, if you're talking about the kids or the dogs, um, if you use the the in there indicating a certain, a certain dog, the dog, or the kid, something like that, it would go with the word that it's, um, it's uh, working with. The the is working with the kids. It's not working with another word. Okay, so you have questions and then you work with the answer. And on this uh, page, we're going to work with the questions and then <clears throat> going to the other book the uh, we're going to also work on the answers. So we might need uh, both books when we get to the workbook. So um, there on G, it gives uh, who the um, subject is and it's your mother so the your is specifying which mother, not just the mother, which is rather indefinite, but your mother makes it more specific. So the your has to go with mother in the sentence and then making dinner, make dinner. And then you have to put that other verb in front. So your mother slash make dinner becomes is your mother making dinner. And in Spanish, you put a question mark at the beginning of a question and at the end. But uh, in English, you just use that end question mark. In, in number one, your mother is she. In the letter G, number one, when they when say your mother is she for this reason you say is if you were making an answer you would use the she but here you're just working on the question so it's giving the pieces to the question it doesn't give that first is that's understood with um you know, the, the word that you're working with. So is, you're going to have to come up with, and then your mother is there, and then the verb that you're going to make present continuous, and then whatever is being made is the dinner. So mm -hmm. is your mother making dinner? Is that still confusing? No, okay, understand. So, how would you do number two? Number two are Tom and his friend playing soccer. Very good. It's R because it's talking about oh. two mm -hmm. Tom and his friend, so it's plural. So, it's R. Are Tom and his friend, and that's the subject of the sentence. Mm -hmm. it, it's a several word subject, but that's the subject. And then playing soccer is what they're doing. So mm -hmm. that's perfect. Okay, what do you think number three is? Are you washing the car? Very good. And number four? Is she doing homework? Well, you use the subject. You don't use the she. 
You okay. use the Anna. If in Anna, the answer, you could say she, okay. but in the question, you use the Anna. Mm -hmm. it, is Anna doing homework? Good. And number five, are your friends talking on the phone? Okay, that's perfect. Okay, any questions? When 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 on the answer when answer the question using the verb in the A N G example are you washing the car? Yes each uh, no it is not correct example. And number four, is Anna doing homework? The answer is Anna or she is doing homework. Yes. Okay. Now you can use on the answer, you can use the proper name Anna or you can use she, but that's in the answer. In the question, you have to have the um, actual um, person, the actual subject, like Tom and his friend, you can't just say they because that's too indefinite. You have to have Tom and his friend so you know you're talking about just these two. So um, the answer would be yes, they are. You could use the they in the answer but not in the question. And same here with Anna. Is Anna doing homework? Yes, she is, or no, she isn't. But that would be in the answer. It wouldn't be in the question because you need to make the question specific enough so the person knows who you're talking about. Use the verb doing or do? In the answer or? In the answer, uh-huh. You would use the doing. Doing, yes. Um, you could shorten it to just, yes, she is. See up there in the yellow box, the purple and yellow box? Mm -hmm. They don't um, repeat what is the action is okay. or what it's on. Um, so it's just, are you doing the laundry? And then the answer is just, yes, I am or no, I'm no, not. I'm not. Okay. So in the answer, you don't have to put the doing homework because it's there in the question. All the details are there in the question. So in the answer, you're answering that specific question. So is Anna doing homework? Yes, she is, or no, she isn't. Okay. Is okay. that a little more clear? Yes. Okay. All right, and then the down at the bottom, it's again doing acts of actions. So we'll just kind of skip that part, but we will go on to the workbook. And the workbook here is going to take a little bit of work. I think you've asked the questions so you would be able to do it okay, but still, um, First of all, on page 102, that's 102. It says, look at the pictures, write the household chores 
use the words in the box. Now, sometimes you just have to write A or B, but this time you're writing out the whole what it is. And this is exactly the same as in the other book. So um, number one, what would that be? It's a letter in the book. In the workbook. In the workbook. Page 103? Two. 100, okay. It has those same pictures. Okay, number one, he talked on the phone. Okay. Number two, do homework. Yes. Number three, make dinner. Yes. Number four, uh, take out the garbage. Yes. Number five, make uh, pay bills. Yes. Number six, uh, do the laundry. Yes. Number seven, wash the car. Number eight, uh, work the dog. And number nine, clean the house. Okay. Any question on any of those? It's exactly the same as in the other book. Mm -hmm. The pictures are, are the same and the captions are the same. Mm -hmm. All right, and then on page 103, okay. here you're going to be using answers. In the text, it didn't, it didn't really go into the answers much, but here are the answers. So it says, read the questions, complete the answers, use contractions. So it just gives the yes or no. And as we, as we just talked about, you don't have to say all of the action. You can just say, yes, he is, or no, he isn't. So what's number one? Okay, number one. Is he going the laundry? Yes, he is. See, you, you can shorten it. Um, that covers everything because the question covered those details. Okay. Number two, he, is he washing the car? No, he isn't. Number three, is she talking talking on the phone? Yes, she is. Number five, number four. Are you talking, talk, working the dog? No, you aren't. Number five, are they making dinner? Yes, they are. In number six. Are the students doing homework? No, they are. They aren't. Okay. They aren't. They aren't. I didn't look at the answers, but you're doing it according to what the book told us to do. Mm -hmm. I didn't do it according to what the book told us to do. So, um, Again, yes, you just say he is, but on no, he isn't. And yes, she is, no, I'm not. And that's the situation where you don't use the contraction with the not. And then yes, they are, and no, they aren't. Okay, I have the question number four. Okay, you are, ah, it's talk with me, you are. Okay. You are, no, I am, I know, okay. All right, on, in the, the textbook, there in that yellow and purple box, see, no, I'm not, 
Mm -hmm. But no, he isn't. That's number two. Yes, she, well, let's see. Number six is no, they aren't. Oh. But see, in number four, it's no, I'm not. Because the question is for me, you are working the duck. Okay. The other thing is, it would be really hard to say this word. <laughs> And if you followed along, see, that's the verb and not, I don't know if you could say that. And I think that's why this would be a very difficult word to say. Mm -hmm. You can say isn't, you can say aren't, but that's what it would be if you did follow that same pattern with I am not. And I don't know how you'd say that. Amped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think that's the reason why it's I'm not, where it's he isn't and they aren't. The pronunciation in the number C is aren't. 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 It's almost like you don't have that E there. It's almost armed, 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 yes, armed, 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 Ethan. Ethan. That's right. Arms. Arms. Okay. Not their arms. Not their arms. Arms. And see, in Spanish, for the most part, you say every letter, but you don't do it in English. See, here you've left this E out. There are a lot of words in English that you just leave out a lot of letters. And in the English that the people in England say and use, I can't tell what they're saying sometimes <laughs> because they leave out a, letters, a lot of letters that I think should be in there. Uh, there's this one book and the man's name, let's see, is, whoops. Let me, let me make a little more space here. But wait a minute, it changed it. Okay, his name, this is the way it's spelled. And so I would say that you'd pronounce that St. John. But they pronounce it St. John. <laughs> yeah. So I'm glad, or you maybe need to be glad that you're not trying to learn English in England. <laughs> because they pronounce that St. John. Where they get St. John, I'm not sure. Other than A, I, N, you know. They're, they're changing some of this and some of this. So, I've got a call from Gallatin. <laughs> I don't think it's from you. Um, okay, I'm going to remove this because I think that would be a little bit confusing if I left it there. Okay. All right, now. Does that answer the questions on this part? No. All right, in C, you're writing the questions just like you have been doing. So it gives the, the noun for the subject, 
and in the action, wash the car. So are you washing the car is number one. Okay. Are you washing the car? Okay. Number two is diary, diary, diarrhea. Diarrhea, playing, no, paying bills. That's what it has there. Don't ask me how to pronounce her name. Um, and sometimes we would put a the in there, but if they're not giving a the, you don't put it. Like the car, but you just pay bills. Washing the car, paying bills. Paying. Yeah. So um, I, I think you did fine there. Okay, number three, are Ivan and Sara studying English? That's right. Number four, are they cleaning, cleaning the house? Yes. Number five, is he taking out the garbage? In number C, uh, is Jan, Jan <laughs> playing soccer? Jan Wynn playing soccer. I don't know. I don't speak <laughs> that language. So, uh, you know, as far as the pronunciation of the names, I don't know. Your pronunciation is as good as mine. But your use of the English is good. You did a good job. Okay, thanks. All right. And then on D, what is that telling you to do? Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Uh, yes. No. No. I. No. In this case, are you doing homework? Yeah. 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 No, I am, I am not. Good. In number two, Yes, I am. Okay, it's correct? Yes. Okay. Number You're not two. actually talking the, on the phone, but you are answering the question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> number four, number three. Yes, I am. Yes. In number four. Yes, I am. <laughs> okay. And see, if you're being um, honest, you're not actually talking on the phone right now. So you could put a no there. But these are your answers. Okay. These well, are not my answers. In this, moment, answers. in this moment, no. Number two is no. I... I'm not. I'm not. No, I'm not. Okay. Okay. I'm confused. Going to you and okay, I, I you because in a, it's plural and singular, but in this way, you is I. Yes. In this one, it's singular. Okay. Um, now, if it was asking you and me, so both of us, it would be we, it would be plural. But when you're answering a question that's asked you, it's I. Okay. 
Yes, it is confusing. Yes, it is English. <laughs> and this is what makes it so hard. Um, I think it's much easier to learn Spanish. Now, I don't know what I'm saying, but I can read a simple Spanish book maybe don't have the pronunciation completely right, but I could read it, but I wouldn't know what I was saying. In English, you could take a simple book like a child's book and have trouble with it because of all this confusion. Mm -hmm. English is just confusing and it's hard. But you're practicing, you're working, I can hear you improving uh, week to week. Um, I hear um, the, the desire in you to learn it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's there. And if you have this desire, you're going to learn it. They continue to have difficulty with conversation. The big conversation are difficult. And again, it's just practice, just like everything else. Mm -hmm. Because I think the 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 word in in my head was when I go to out is difficult. <laughs> and once you get to the point where you're thinking the English word in English, mm -hmm. okay. the way that I would say it, you've really learned English. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have many levels of classes. We have actually two beginning classes, and then we have four more advanced classes. And those people, um, there's a lady that I talk to, not every day, but every week. And um, even so, she knows a lot of English. She's also a teacher. Uh, she knows a lot of English, but there are times when her English and my English just don't quite make it. Um, and, and we have to work at it a little bit just because English is so hard. But she's been at it for a lot longer than you have. Mm -hmm. so practice. It's I, practice. Mm -hmm. I'm practicing not that later because I listen to people talk in English. At first, I'm translator. The first sentence is okay. Then, confuses everything because I'm translated, <laughs> okay? Um, now I listen to people to talk in English and try to, in English, <laughs> understand in English, in Spanish, not translated the sentences because mine confused them, confused and not understand everything. <laughs> you should see some of the emails that I've gotten or, or texts that I've gotten from students. Now, you know what level you are and, and how much you know. Okay, people that are in your level and they're using the translator and they're trying to tell me something. And sometimes it doesn't tell me a thing because the translator isn't always helpful. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if you use just one word um, and you ha you'll see a choice, several different choices of words, and those don't all mean the same thing. Just like that list of words that I showed you that all of these have the same sound to them, but mm -hmm. they mean different. There are some words that um, uh, could mean this in Spanish, or this in Spanish, or this in Spanish, and it gets really confusing. So it's just a matter of practice. Now, some people will um, listen to 
uh, American TV or we'll um, just talk with someone. I have one student that um, his daughter came, we, when we were meeting in person, we would have um, parties at certain um, times of the year, like at Thanksgiving. We would have a Thanksgiving meal and we would have someone come and talk to us and that sort of thing. Well, this man brought his daughter with him. And at the end of um, the meal part, we have about an hour of class, sometimes less, sometimes more, but we have some class time. And so after class, she said, what can I do to help my father? And I said, practice English with him. Just set aside a time that you just use English. And the next time that he came, now I forget what he actually does, but if the weather is nice, he's going to be working. Even late, you know, in the summer, um, it doesn't get dark until pretty late. And so he would come to class as much as he could, but um, not always because he had to work. So the next time he came to class, I said something to him about, you've been practicing. And he says, yes, my <laughs> daughter won't speak Spanish with me. <laughs> So it's something that you and say, Diego, mm -hmm. you can work together on the English. Now don't do it when you're trying to do homework. That might get co confusing, but maybe like during a meal or something like that, maybe when he gets home first, for, first gets home from school, just sit down and practice a little bit. Mm -hmm. We're just going to use English and, um, the more you use your English, the better off it will be. This one man um, just really, he, he, he wasn't serious about coming to class. The only reason he came to class was because his mother wanted to come. And then he married a girl from, I believe it was Puerto Rico, but she was not a first generation. She really didn't know much Spanish. And here they are married, and he's speaking mostly Spanish, and she's speaking mostly English. And today you wouldn't be able to tell that he didn't know English because it was a have to. Can you imagine um, your husband just knowing Spanish and you just knowing English, or him just knowing English and you just knowing Spanish? That's the way it was for them. And uh, his English just took off, just, just did very well. So um, have a good week. Thank you. you and keep practicing. And um, I think you're going to do very well just simply because you have that desire. Thank you. Thank you. The ones who don't have a real desire, it doesn't happen. It, it just, this one man would come to class and he would work so hard in class, but at home he wouldn't speak English with anyone. And so he never really learned to speak English. He wrote, but he didn't learn to speak it because he didn't really practice it at home. Mm -hmm. So you're getting there. <laughs> it's coming and it's obvious when you do the work, when you start speaking. Now there's some things that are giving you trouble. Okay, that's what you practice on. But you're just doing great. Thank you. Have a great day today. You too, and have a great week. See you the next week. Um, okay, they taught me a word. Um, now I can't put in a sentence. Otro semana. La próxima semana. <laughs> La próxima semana. See, I told you I didn't know. But see you next week. Bye. See you. <laughs> Thank you. See, I don't practice my Spanish either. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Great day.